Hi guys, in this video, we're going to be looking deeper into Energy XT. Today, we're going to tackle the drum sampler. Let's check it out. Here we are in a blank, empty project. There's nothing in here. I just press Control N to create a new project. And a couple of things that I want to show you as well that I didn't mention very much in the setup video is showing the mixture strip and the object bar. Now, because there's nothing in here, it just looks like it expanded our gray, empty voids. Um, but I want to show you how I pull in my own samples and use the drum sampler. This is just really intuitive once you kind of do it a couple of times. So what I want is a bass drum. So I'm going to grab a an 808 kick drum here, and I'm going to drag and drop it right in here. When I get that red rectangle, that's where I, that's where I want this sample to go. And what it's going to do is automatically create the drum sampler device for me. Now I've got some information showing up here in my channel strip and in my object bar up here. And that's what I want. I'm going to quickly rename this. I can do it by right clicking and choosing rename, or I can use my shortcut keys on the keyboard, control R to rename. And I'll just name it kick. This bar right here is our loop point. I'm going to drag it out to five. So I've got four measures here to play with and I'll double click to create a four measure clip. I'm going to create a really, really basic pattern just so we have something to play with so that we can look deeper into the drum sampler itself. I double click to create a clip and then double click inside that clip to add notes or beats to my track. I can also drag select to get all of those notes, hold control and copy them. And now I've got all the beats I want. Since we have our mixer strip in view, I can just hover over the volume here and just drag and pull it down just a little bit. Since my loop option is on, it's just going to loop over and over and over again, just for this section. Now, if I hover over the drum sampler label right here, I can open up the drum sampler device. Now that we have our drum sampler open, let me just talk about the anatomy of this drum sampler. It's set up much like the old school MPCs. We have pads where we can load in our samples. And what this has already done because of, because of the way we did it, just by dragging and dropping our kick in this area right here, what it's done is it's automatically created the device with that sample on the first pad. We can add more sound to this. So if we wanted a bank of kick drums, we can just drag and now drop them onto these pads right from our browser. I can click the pads to play them instantly. I can also play them with while this device is open by using my number keys on the keyboard. So I'm just playing these drum samples now on the keyboard and I like to use the numpad because it's set out like a grid, except it's backwards. So one is my first pad. Uh, go all the way up to eight. Now this drum sampler basically has an infinite amount of slots, not just 12 here. If I expand this window by hovering over and just pulling it out, you can see I can add a bunch more. Now each pad has a ton of control. Already available to me is 
a filter. So I'm gonna play this and show you as I adjust the cutoff here on this low filter what's happening. See how it's rolling off all the high end? I can also adjust the Q or the resonance. And I can change this filter type to a bandpass filter or a high pass filter. This is really, really handy. <clears throat> this is really, really handy for low, for rolling off low end for a hi hat or a snare, or doing subtle tweaks just to that single pad. Now that will only affect that pad. When I select a different pad, I have different controls. So here's my first pad. Let's just change this to a high pass filter and actually just turn the cutoff all the way off. When I select the next pad, you can see it now this is on a low pass filter and I can change it here. So these are all unique settings for each individual pad. This is really, really powerful to have built in. If you've ever used battery from native instruments, this is a lot like that, except streamlined, minimal, and I think a lot easier to use. And it's built right in. I also have control over the pitch. So as I play this under the course, this is going to change the pitch of that sample, that pad, by semitones. The fine tune changes it by cents. So I can really, really dial in really precisely how the pitch is going to be affected. And that's per pad on this one track. This last option down here at the bottom is group. And what we do is click and drag to change this. So if it's in group one, if I put something else in group one, these two samples will now never play at the same time. It's a mute group. So as one plays over the next one, it will stop the playing of that other one. So this works really, really well for hi-hats. And let me just show you that. So let me grab some hi-hat samples and we're gonna pull them into the same sampler. Let's just rearrange them so the hi-hat is first. We can also drag and drop our samples inside here to rearrange them, which will affect which notes are being played and which sample is being played on those pads. So we have a closed hi-hat now on pad one and we'll drag in an open hi-hat on pad two. Let's put these in mute group number two and our open eye hat in mute group, mute group number two as well. So now you can hear that open eye hi hat, which has a longer release. And as soon as I play the closed hi hat, it stops the other hi hat from playing. Just like if you were closing the high, uh, an actual hi-hat by pressing down on the pedal. So that's our filter, our cutoff, our resonance, or cue, our coarse pitch, our fine pitch, and our mute groups. And we're just getting started with what this drum sampler can do. On each pad, we also have available an EQ all ready to go for us. So if I just toggle this down, I get full control over a four band EQ. So if this, on this uh, hi-hat, maybe I wanna just make sure that there's no low end. Here I can see what's happening with the graph. So I have a low shelf 
EQ band here. I can adjust the decibels, so I'm taking it all the way down to negative 24. I can adjust the hertz or the frequency, and I can adjust the, the Q or the roundness of this particular EQ band. So I can just say, you know what, under, I can also double click to type in here and say under 100 hertz, I don't want to have anything and let's just adjust the roll off and make it pretty sharp. And that EQ is available for every single pad inside this drum sampler. So maybe our third pad here, will change the EQ a little bit and let's just add a little bit of bass. And let's do it by, again, activating our first EQ band. We've got four bands to choose from. And we're gonna pull it all the way down. And then we're going to adjust our Q so that we get a little bump. And now we can push this up a little bit. So maybe we get that little bump around 60 Hertz or so. So it's cutting off a lot of the sub frequency. This would be great if you wanna layer your kick drums and have one for the punch and one for the sub. And see how that EQ changes as I select those different pads. We also have insert effects per pad. So on this hi-hat, I can add an insert effect. Maybe I just want a reverb. So I'll go to my multi effects. These are the built-in effects in Energy XT and I'll add a reverb. Maybe on this kick drum, I wanna add a compressor. So I'm just adding the built-in compressor here. Or maybe a bit crusher. So you can see what those insert effects do on those individual pads. Finally, we can also add send effects. Now, when we add a send effect, it's also going to add it as a channel in our mixer. So for example, a, a reverb would be a good send effect. So maybe for this hi-hat, I'm going to add a little bit of wetness to that hi-hat. Now it does not affect any of the other pads. And what it's doing over here in the mixer is playing the sample and also sending it to this new reverb send right next to it. Now that reverb is available to us on any channel, any pad, and we can have different amounts of reverb. Per pad. We also have a very simple wave editor built right in to this drum sampler. If we click on the wave icon right here, we can change the start and end points of our samples. If I wanted to make this hi-hat just a little blip, or maybe I just want to make it a little shorter, I can adjust those start and end points in here. This is really great if you have a sample that maybe doesn't start right at the very beginning of the audio file. You can just adjust that starting point to make sure that there's no empty space before it's playing and before it's triggered. So we could build an entire drum kit in here if we wanted to and save this as a patch or a preset. So I'll click save as, we could give it a name and I'll just call this test drum sampler click OK. And this will allow us to pull this up later on and use it on projects in the future. And that's the drum sampler in Energy XT. This thing is so cool. It's very, very powerful, very streamlined. Once you use it a few times and really get the hang of it, you can see how powerful it can be. 
this combined with the browser makes this thing so powerful. Let's say I don't want this kick anymore. From the browser, I can just drag and drop a new sample onto that pad. It replaces that pad. It also gets rid of my insert. If I want to add that bit crusher again, I could do that as well, but I like this better. So even with the pattern plane, we can swap out samples from the browser right into the drum sampler. That is the drum sampler in Energy XT. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.